are Tyrians. We are many races, several professions. We practice the arts of combat as well as healing. We have foes, and we fight them without mercy. And it's time for us to claim back what is ours. It's time for us to claim back Tyria from the terror of the Elder Dragons. We can't go on living our lives in fear. We have to fight. We have to make a stand. This is our story. Hello and welcome to episode 7 of Chronicles of Tyria podcast, a Guild Wars 2 podcast by fans for fans. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out viewing this episode and for everybody that's viewed our previous episodes we just broke 60 subscribers closing in on 1800 views so thank you to everybody for coming and checking that out you can see our other podcasts at cotpodcast.com or on our youtube channel at cotpodcast uh i am lag i'm here with dent finally again yay and Naveen. Hello. <laughs> and our very special guest from Project Tyria, Alicardolina. Hi. And today we're going to be talking, we're going to be doing an interview with Alicardolina first about her, Project Tyria, and then we're going to start talking about the human lore. But uh, before we get going, how, how's everybody doing? I'm, doing? I'm good. Great. Well enough. Well enough. My eyes feeling better, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Dent is really a bad boy. Got into a fight at the restaurant where he works. Got a black Some, guy. Someone threw mm-hmm. a plate in his face. You should see the other guy. <laughs> He's clean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm walking around. I'm I'm using it as like a medal of honor, though. I look like one of those sexy um, mixed martial arts fighters. There you go. Right. <laughs> Naveen sounds very. Uh, she believes you, 100% oh, there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so, in the interest of time and our wonderfully short podcasts, I guess maybe we just get right into it, unless anybody has anything they want to talk about first. Nope. Okay, so we're going to start off with our interview with Al Cardellina of Project Tyria. I hope you're ready. I guess so. She we'll died. <laughs> Oh, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. That's all right. Uh, so I don't know. I guess I'll field the first question, and well, I'll start off with when we've kind of been asking everybody. So, how did you get involved with gaming in general? Uh, I actually grew up playing video games. Like the started on the Nintendo back when it was the new thing uh, with my older and younger brothers, and so. I've been kind of playing games since then. And when did you kind of get involved with computers and MMOs? Is Guild Wars your first MMO, or did you play any games prior to that? Well, I've been using computers since I was, like, really small, like, toddler. (laughs) But, uh, (laughs) um, Guild Wars was not my first MMO. Um, I think my first MMO was Fiesta. (gasps) <gasps> oh, no. oh, oh, if you guys know. Yes, I love that game. That game is uh, the bombtasticdiggity.com. <laughs> <laughs> and it was kind of the first in my search for uh, an MMO that really just stood out to me. I've tried stuff like uh, Shia and all the way up to World of Warcraft. Mm-hmm. And nothing really interested me as much as the copy of Guild Wars that I picked up. So, so yeah. So I guess what kind of got you? I mean, you said you just it interest you most. Was there anything? Did you hear anything and made you like, oh, I have to try out this game, Guild Wars? Or was that just kind of next on your list of games to try? Um, actually, I had the soundtrack already on my desktop, hmm. and so I I had been listening to it and didn't realize that it was an MMO because a friend had given me the soundtrack. And so that that one day it just dawned on me. It's just like, this is an MMO. What am I doing? Going through everything else? <laughs> mm-hmm. 
So, so uh, Jeff, what, what's up, Navi? No, I was just gonna say. So basically, the the music brought you to the game first. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I guess that's probably not your typical route for most people that that no. get into gaming. So that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, that's really interesting. I guess it, Jeremy it, so it, could be uh, very proud of that. <laughs> Yeah, it's made me a huge fan of him. So, usually if he's done a soundtrack for a game, I'll probably go play it at least once. I believe he's the Soul Calibur soundtrack. I believe he makes all of those, so... I haven't read that, but I have been playing, like, Soul Calibur since, like, Soul Blade. I don't play it much anymore, though. Yeah, I haven't been a fan of the the newer incarnations. I could be wrong on that. I just... I had all the collector's editions that came with the soundtrack, and I thought it was him, but... Um, so, then I guess before we start talking about Project Tyria and your, you know, your further involvement in, in Guild Wars, and I, I sprung this one on Naveen last time, so what would you say is your favorite game of all time? Uh, it's actually Castlevania Symphony of the Night, hands mm-hmm. down. Good answer. It's just a wonderful soundtrack to that game. Soundtracks really draw me into games. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I've been a Castlevania fan since I was like playing it on the Nintendo. I'm right there with you, and I'm totally wrong, I think, about the Soul Calibur thing, so don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, but, alright, so we know how you got involved with Guild Wars, and obviously you're quite a fan of Guild Wars and the up-and-coming Guild Wars 2. Yeah. So much so that you decided to start this website and this project called Project Tyria. So why don't you tell everybody a little bit about that? Well, as a lot of people know, Project Tyria is made to do a screenshot comparisons of Guild Wars 1 and Guild Wars 2. And it shows things that weren't there before and things that were there before. So something like Ascalon City, you can go there, and there's actually Nolini Academy mm-hmm. um, in the big, you know, in the first game, mm-hmm. and then you go back to the second game, and you can actually see the ruins from Nolini Academy. So it's really interesting seeing the things from the first game carried over to the second game, whereas it might be the opposite way around where something from the first game isn't carried over to the second game and it's just as interesting. Mm. So that those comparisons made you start Project Tyria. Well, you just decided one morning, oh, I'll take screenshots of both game and post it on a blog of mine. Well, it started out with me just taking them because I wanted my own personal collection of them. Because uh, I, I love doing screenshots in games. They're like favorite thing ever. <laughs> so and I think I think you also I saw were doing some stuff with like pre searing Ascalon and post searing Ascalon as well. Yeah, um Ascalon hits a big what to do with bands and everything and I, I think it's because it's so close to our hearts. Mm-hmm. And so Expanding on the uh, Guild Wars 1, Guild Wars 2 comparisons, I also wanted to do pre and post since I already had some screenshots of that. Mm -hmm. And so I just added them in because it just feels like home to me. Hmm. And how much much research do you have to do to find all those places? Like, you go all over Tyria. How, How much time does it take you to go into Guild Wars 1, take those screenshots, and then find that place in Guild Wars 2 and, you know, take the screenshot and then do all that work up until you post them on your blog? Well, first off, I actually start by looking at the maps themselves Mm. uh, from each game and comparing them up. Um, And because the distances are different, I kind of have to give myself a little circle area of where something might be. Right. And so I spend literally hours just looking over these maps and plotting places I want to go look at. And it I, I first end up going into Guild Wars 2 to take the pictures instead of going to Guild Wars 1 because I never know if I can actually find the place. 
Right. So basically what you're saying is that you spend much more time on the maps themselves than you actually go to find them. Yes. Huh, that's interesting. And would you have any tips to give for to people who would like to submit the screenshots to your project? Because I, I think you do that all, as well, right? They can send the screenshots to uh, one of your email address and um, to do the comparison and just submit them to projectteria.com, right? Yeah, um, I highly encourage it, actually, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> since I, I want this to be a community project and not just a one-person thing. Right. And you want to be able to play the game and not be stuck just looking for screenshots all the time, right? I do that all the time anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said projectteria.com, but it's projectteria.blogspot.com, right? Yes. Okay. What uh, kind of places can we expect for you to get in the next beta weekend? Um, I will be doing a lot of uh, Radisum, as well as the Pale Tree, since I've already went out and taken screenshots of those, because I know they'll be there in Guild Wars 2, as well as the uh, ruins above Radisum. I'm going to plot it out and see if I can actually find those. Uh mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys remember the temple ruins mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be searching for that as well. Oh, good. And uh, concerning the, the question from before, what I had, do you have any tips for the people who would like to submit screenshots? Um, well, mostly I would request that everybody can have the before on the left and the after on the right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you're actually wanting to go in to find these places, you'll also want to plot things on the map and kind of compare the maps together. I have a new post on that mm -hmm. um, showing how uh, similar the maps can be. Right, I've seen that post and uh, we're actually going to link it uh, on our website so that people can be directly um, linked to that place so that they can have easy access and you know because beta weekend is coming so quickly yay mm -hmm. um, yeah and <coughs> I, I actually uh, created the Project Teria Guild and it will be in Guild Wars 2 hmm. and I will be doing tours for anyone who's interested so if anyone wants to join the guild all they have to do is contact me with their in game name and I'll add them on and of course, why not? You can join multiple guilds. So. That's, that's super interesting. You're going to be like the tour bus of Tyria. Just, <laughs> hey, hop Patent on the that wagon. Name right now, before it gets taken. Tour, tour bus, bus of Tyria. <laughs> That'll be a character name. <laughs> that, is your, that is your new user title on the forum. Yeah, okay. a tour bus of Tyria. <laughs> Yeah, it's just as long as it's like exciting, you know, because you know, I've been on a tour bus for like Chicago, and the guy was just like, "And if you look to your left, you'll find this hamburger stand." <laughs> yeah, but it could be like, "Well, here we go. We're going through, you know, such and such a place, and oh my God, the shadow behemoth is attacking." <laughs> help out this group of people. Yeah. yeah, that thing always comes out when I go there. Then we need to uh, hang oh. out more. Because yeah, it never comes out seriously. There. And Avery and I sat out. For like four hours waiting for it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm oh. going to bed, guys. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> it was worth it. I don't care. <laughs> Are you looking for the Shadow Behemoth? Track down Alicardalina and take the tour bus to God Lost Swamp. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Go for the Aegis tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, I have a few questions. Uh, this is about your writing specifically, since you just recently uh, became a featured writer on the Chronicles of Tyria website. Okay. Um, uh, first off, are your stories canon? Uh, for the most part, yeah. I tried to keep it uh, canon to the human storyline, uh, mm -hmm. where I kind of strafe off of it uh, once it gets to... Uh, the noble part where uh, you really kind of meet Logan. Mm -hmm. uh, Logan's a jerk anyways, but uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I got up to that amount of the storyline and then just hightailed it off. And so I made my character do that actually. But I keep a lot of the, uh, 
the details and war and everything pretty straight. That's good. Um, when it when it comes to like the keeping the storyline canon for the most part in the beginning, why uh, why did you choose to only have that part canon? Uh, because I know for me, whenever I wrote the one post that I have for my character, um, <laughs> um, it, it, I was doing that mainly because. I would have more kind of an organization and more of an idea of where the story was going, but I didn't know if you had an, a different method or reason. Um, no, I mean, I took a different take on the beginning because there are a lot of people doing the same storyline as I am. So I made it so that I wasn't the hero, but one of the heroes. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't see, I didn't pick up on that. That was very clever. Mm-hmm. Nice. Where do you draw your inspiration? That's always a um, cliche question to ask. <laughs> I'm <laughs> curious. <laughs> well, um, I spend a lot of time in game and really just enjoying the environments. And so I end up going outside and doing these things and just going through these places. And something about nature just really inspires me. And so I get in character in my mind as I walk mm-hmm. through. Yeah, so. I do the same thing when I play. But I, I mean, heck, that must really inspire you because I think you were like the most active writer we have in the Hands entire down. community. Yeah. <laughs> you were on chapter four already. <laughs> it's crazy. But and I mean, it's great writing. Yeah. Too, if you haven't oh, read it. Thank you. <laughs> um, what can we expect with, uh, you know, with the exception of like spoilers, but what can we expect in upcoming installments of your story? Um. Well, you know, of course, she's going to go to Asquan to find mm-hmm. herself, and you pretty much know that from the beginning. But right. once she finally does find herself, and it's not going to be an Asquan, um, which I don't mind spoiling, <laughs> <laughs> she then has to learn why the gods have kept her alive. So that is oh. only like the first, the introduction of the story. Well, darn. I, I feel bad for asking because now I'm like intrigued and I can't. <laughs> I'm the most impatient person ever. So I'm, I'm just drawing like, you in now. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's good. I have to read. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, and this is about uh, Ventari's refugees. Um, where did you come up with the idea for Kiffy the Asura? Um, I really just don't care for the snarkiness of the Asuras if I'm going to play one. <laughs> and so I actually thought when I did the Ventari's Refugees, I actually thought about what it would be like if each of them weren't in the racial stereotypes. Mm-hmm. It, aside from Angel, of course. Mm-hmm. But she she is like your stereotypical Norn. And since I already yeah. had one that wasn't so much, I had to throw her in. Yeah. Um. Because I noticed it was a collection. It's titled Ventari's Refugees, a collection of short stories. Now, so does that mean that there are more short work series to come? Yes. Unless there's only uh, the first one in there. What can we there will, expect? What kind of other short stories are we going to be getting? Um, There will be one for each character. And mm-hmm. they will all be written in a different style. Um. And I will be posting each profile as I start to write them. That way you can know which one's coming up next. And a lot of people are actually a fan of uh, Angel for my story. Mm -hmm. So, but I have to write her last uh, as well as uh, Tobe Mm. because they tie in more into my original story later. Ah. Right. Well, that's good, though, that you're holding out the favorite one for last because it keeps people wanting. I mean, look at ArenaNet with the Silvari and the Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this beta one weekend. we're ready. So, uh-huh. Yeah. Basically, I mean, that's all my questions. Alucard and Alina is like, well, when I'm ready. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Hi. It, it will be a really good story, Angels will. So I think a lot of people will. Will. Well, Dint brought up the uh, Ysura and the Silvari. So I guess, I mean, we're all excited to play, and I'm sure you are too. So do you think that it was a good idea that ArenaNet let them out in the beta weekend, or you think they should have maybe left them for launch? Well, I like the idea of keeping them mystery to 
to the launch. Mm. I also like the fact that they will be able to test them out right. during the event. So I'm kind of half half on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. I, I like I I've, I've teetered back and forth, but now that I know that all of my characters are white for this coming beta, uh, well, I'm going to start fresh anyway. Might as well start with a Silvaria and a Sura. So. Mm. I'll be starting back with my human. <laughs> oh, yeah, it sucks because you were, you know, running around doing all that exploring, having the, the extra levels and access to all the areas had to have been pretty nice. Yeah. So, actually, and we talked about this, I think, the other day, but the new Vista system, I imagine that that's going to be great for you when you're going around and exploring different areas and you get to get the cutscene of the whole area. I'm sure that's going to help you out a lot. Yeah, we'll actually be able to have pictures from different angles we couldn't have before. So Mm -hmm. that will be very interesting. For those who don't know what vistas are, they're basically... I don't remember what the icon looks like. I think it's a map. Yeah, I think it's a map. But when you land on it, it shows you a cutscene of the environment around that map. So basically you can see hidden stuff, like, you know, puzzle... the, the, the jumping puzzles and all those neat things so those those are vistas that arena net suddenly put in place in guild wars 2 yeah they are uh, they're going to be in this beta weekend and obviously upon release yeah so uh any of the you know, and when you would normally explore an area completely you'd have points of interest skill points waypoints and renown hearts and now they added in vistas as another thing to be able to complete it. Because I think one of their thought processes was, you know, you can pretty much complete exploring an entire area relatively quickly, and it gives you a ton of experience and awesome items. Mm-hmm. So they did this to kind of add in a little something extra. But, I mean, hey, for first time, we'll be able to get screenshots where you don't have your character in it, which is cool. Yay! Uh, if yeah, you want to take... We still don't have first person. Yeah, exactly. Arena net. Yeah. Get on that. First person view, please. Yeah. So, uh, if you check the most recent ArenaNet blog post, they actually they mention it, the one from this morning, and they have a video of uh, the Holbrack Vista, so you can check that out, and we could link that in the description. Mm-hmm. So, I think we're starting to or wind ourselves down here on uh, our questions for you. So, obviously, we know you're going to play a human on launch, so is that your favorite race out of all of them, and then what? I'm assuming elementalist as the profession, but what's going to be your main character, and what's your favorite combination? Well, obviously, I have too strong of ties to my human Alucardolina Claire because mm. I can't let her die. Obviously, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I will be an elementalist, and I will probably stay mostly attuned to fire. Okay. I hear that. I'm uh, very much in the same same kind of mindset, so. <laughs> uh, does any, Veen, did you have any other questions you wanted to ask, Alec or Alina? No, I'm... Well, actually, you don't do just Project Theria. Um, what our listeners may not know about you is that you're big into cosplay, and you actually do your own costumes as well, right? Yeah. And uh, you had this project about the elementalists? Uh, yeah, I'm actually doing my elementalist uh, Elite Stormforge costume in Slate. And I'm making it real because I absolutely adore the costume. Mm-hmm. They, it looks pretty cool. Um, yeah. Did sh- I think I've seen that on your DeviantArt page. Uh, you're accepting commission, is that right? Um, I do commissions. Uh, right now, I'm currently booked up for about the next month. But mm. after that, I'm pretty much free for the next person who contacts me. Oh, that's great. So we can put a link on our website uh, directly to your DeviantArt and see what you can do. Is there another place online aside from DeviantArt where they can see uh, your costumes, your art, and everything? Um. Well, DeviantArt's pretty much my main one. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I have a couple of other places, but I don't update them as often, so they're pretty much obsolete. Oh, all right. So I think it would be a good idea to just post that link on our website so that people can see what you do, and if they're interested, they can uh, send you an email or a private message, and uh, from there, you'll go on. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think our, our final kind of question here, we'll wrap up our, our interview, is, I mean, we already kind of talked about it all, but is there anything that you want to tell anybody, get out there, mention anybody about Project Tyria, about your writing, about cosplay stuff that you know you want to let everybody know, or any other ways to find or get in contact with you? Um. Well, I, I'm pretty much not very social on the <laughs> internet, but <laughs> because I, I live my life outside outside of the internet when I'm not doing like. Project Tyria and Chronicles of Tyria stuff, mm-hmm. but you know, pretty much you can find me on Chronicles of Tyria. That's one of the main places, since you know I do have to be there to help mod. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and um, uh, I can say that I have a Google Plus. I don't use it as often as I I would like to, but I accept friends from pretty much anyone. So if you look on Google Plus, you can find me underneath uh, the name Alucardolina Claire, of course. Which is if you want to everywhere, we can find you under that name, right? <laughs> yeah, if if you just search Alucardolina on like any social forum site or whatever, and it comes up, it's probably me. There's one <laughs> exception to that, and that's YouTube. And if you want to find me, it's better to just go through Project Terry and find my. Uh, Thank you, video. All okay. right. So, wait, hold on. I, I I heard you comment on this, but it kind of threw me a loop there. There's other stuff than the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for a comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> I, I get one of those every episode. I always get a oh dent. <laughs> yeah. Oh you. <laughs> uh, so, I guess my last kind of question before we wrap up our our interview here is: our in-game meetup on Wednesday, eight thirty. Are you planning on attending? I'm planning on it. All right. So, on top of dent, are you going to be there too? Uh, it's Wednesday, eight thirty. Yes, mm-hmm. it is. Nope, I have to work. Aww. Bummer. Well, Thanks. then you can definitely join me and Naveen and Alicardalina at the very least in game, eight thirty, Lions Arch, National District One by the Fountain, <laughs> for our get together for our fifty subscriber kind of party. But we're already at sixty, so who knows? Maybe we'd hit a hundred by. I doubt it, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Thinking. So. I guess our last thing before we cut this is we had one question really related to human and anything else was from Opera, at least that I came across if anybody else found any questions out there, but it was what's the story behind the whole in Divinity's Reach? And that's the Great Collapse. So I don't know if you guys have anything on that you want to talk about. I've only, like I've seen it and there was a, I don't know if it was a glitch or a bug or whatever, but you can actually get in it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can get in the hole. <laughs> wah, wah. Wah, wah. <laughs> um, but you basically slip through, like, the gate and everything, and then you fall in it, and it's just water. Uh, there's, like, a little bit of structures inside the water and everything, but there's not much about it. I, think, I don't think they meant... Um, for anyone to be in there. Uh, when I was walking in Divinity's Reach, there was two NPCs just walking near that collapsed thing there. And mm. they were talking about, oh, did you see that? And they're like, yeah, there's some weird noises coming out from it, but I don't think it's earthquakes. Mm. So there might be more to it than we think. But other than I- that, I don't know. I can actually add in a little bit to that as well. Yeah, um, sure. Because I spent a lot of time over there researching it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it was actually in the uh, Canton district, of course. Mm-hmm. It, the uh, foundation was built so quickly and so shoddily 
mm-hmm. that it just started to cave in. And they luckily got a lot of people evacuated out. I don't know if they got everyone evacuated, mm-hmm. but uh, they, I think they sent like apologies and everything out for it. But it was because they built it so quickly. Ah. Well, there you go. Uh, and what's, I guess since you mentioned, yeah, it was part of or was the Canton District previously. I wonder if maybe that'll be rebuilt if we get a Canton expansion. Ah. And we get to go in there. I mean, oh, that would be neat. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, they're, you know, the whole thing, when we could talk about this another time, or maybe even later today, depending on the human part, but the whole Canton being super xenophobic, so maybe they wouldn't leave to come to Divinity's Reach? I don't know. <laughs> but that's my thoughts. Maybe an expansion will get it rebuilt. But I guess we'll see. That's actually a very good uh, idea. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm, I have a couple of those every now and then. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's been known to happen. <laughs> yeah, every once in a while. So I guess uh, for the end of our community piece, we'll we'll kind of bring it to a close here. So thank you, Ella Cardellina, for coming out and allowing us to interview you. So thanks for having me. Yeah, and if anybody else has anybody else have anything they want to say, Dent Naveen. Nope. Aside from thank you, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just and want to then, remind the listeners that they can find a look at a little. That's her nickname, <laughs> <laughs> Ali Cardellina. Um, practically everywhere in Chronicles of Tyria, uh, you know, aside from Project Tyria, uh, she's on the forums, she's on the main website, and now she is interviewed on our podcast. So, I mean, if you want, <laughs> if you want to know more about her, of course, you can uh, join our forums and um, go into the introduction thread and just say a little hello to Arakaru. All right. <laughs> Once again, thank you, Al Cardellina, for coming out and letting us interview you. This is going to wrap up our community piece, and we will be joining you for part two of episode seven for our human lore, uh, and that'll be uploaded right after. So thank you, everyone. Woo! Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hi. Hey. Hey. I said hey. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> it's the voice of destiny. We're not naked here. <laughs> Go away. Not not yet. Oh. <laughs> Dan, okay. cover your hey, eyes. Hey, do you want a cam? <laughs> Can't you cam? ASL. ASL! I was just going to say that. <laughs> I hear you guys like role playing. <laughs> Alright. Alright, are we ready? Are you good? Yeah, should be. <laughs>